This video went out one week early on Library. Library has almost everything I want in a digital content platform. It is decentralized, open source, peer-to-peer, -peer, with a backend running on a blockchain with cryptocurrency incentives. That's why I'm truly supporting this project. The Library team humbly offered a nice gift for this community, 100 coupons to claim 100 Library credits, the cryptocurrency. It's not much, but it's enough to get the feel out of how library works. For instance, it is enough to get Moonteaser there. So, you can use the coupon code PICDEVLIBRARY in the reward system to get access to this gift. If you don't know how this works, I will show you how you can redeem this code at the end of this video. That said, let's get started. It's very common when we are developing a game that we make a lot of mistakes, and we need to be fast when we are fixing them, so we stay productive. To be really fast, we can automate repetitive tasks through programming. In Godot Engine, one way to do that is by using editor scripts. So in this video, I will teach you how you can use these powerful scripts by making a tile set tile fixer. So we have this very simple scene, and what I want to do is to change these tiles here, these on the edges of these platforms. So these tiles are the grass nine, and by the way, uh, if you want to have this tile set, I have a asset pack that uses Kenny, so these tiles are from Kenny, and this asset pack is a bundle of more than 800 assets from Kenny, but ready to use in Godot Engine, so you can get them through the Godot Sandbox pack. I will put the links in the description. But I want to change here this tile to this one, so the grass 9, and I want to change them to the grass 4. So let's make a tile set fixer, a tool that will do that automatically for us because let's be smart and not waste time doing repetitive tasks. The first thing that we need to know about editor scripts is that we can just like create and attach them to a node. So what we will do first is that we will go to the script workspace and we'll create a file here. So let's go to file, new script. And instead of inheriting a node, we will inherit editor script. And let's save this editor script in the root folder, but I will name that tile fixer. So let's create this script. And the first thing with editor scripts is that since they will work in the editor, we need to make them two scripts. So let's add the two keyword right at the beginning. And another thing is that since they are not attached to a node, uh, we won't use like ready or process callbacks. Instead, editor scripts, they have the run virtual function that is called when we go to file and run. And when we do that, it will run the current open editor script. So let's go back to our editor script. We'll take rid of everything here. Instead, we'll add the run method. And just so you can see how you can execute this script, I will print executing, executing. and since we uh, actually we do have a scene open, I will close the scene, but if we don't have any scene open, we can save this script by going into save, and you can see that there is a shortcut for that, Control alt s and I will run this script, so I will go into run, and in the output, we can see that we have executing already, so let's clear clear that and I will execute this again and you can see that this is executing so let's clear that again and let's now think about how we can achieve what we want with our editor script so first things first I will pass that and what we actually want to do is just overwrite one tile by another right so let's create two constants here that is the target tile and for now, let's say zero. This will be the index of the tile that we will override. And next, we'll create a constant, another constant, and this will be the desired tile. And let's say one, just for the sake of having something into this constants. And now we can start working with the logic of our, of our script. The main advantage of the editor script, so if we open the documentation for that, I will hold control, and click on editor script is that we can have access to the editor interface. So the editor interface is basically the class that will represent the editor interface of the Godot engine. 
And through that class, we can have access to a lot of interesting parts of the engine with the editors of the engine. One of these is the editor selection. So we, if we open that, the editor selection is basically a class that will represent what is being selected now. So we can have access to selected nodes. And why this is interesting is because if we reopen this scene, so I will open this sample level scene. If we select like the level, uh, we can have access to this level. If we select two or, or more nodes, we can have access to all the selected nodes. And what we'll do is that we'll access that array. So get selected nodes will return an array. And we'll try to see if what is inside this array is a tile map. So let's go back to the tile fixer and let's start by getting the editor uh, interface. So actually we can get the selector already. So the selection already. So selection will be equal to get editor interface dot get selection. And then we'll get, we'll try to access the array of the selected nodes that is inside this selection. So let's create selected nodes, which will be equal to selection dot get selected node. So if we print that and if we save our script and run it, you see that we have the tile map and a node 2D. So this is right what we have selected. But we don't want to have like multiple nodes selected. Or maybe we want, but in this case we will try to get only one selection and this selection will be the tile map. So for that we can use like a some exclusion logic. First things first, let's check if this selected nodes, since it is an array, we can check its size and see if this is greater than one. So if selected node size is greater than one, we will not work with that. We don't want multiple nodes selected. And also, since we don't have an array with more than two nodes selected, meaning that it is greater than one, we can get the first node of this array so the first index of this array and check if it is a tile map, right? So that we can make sure that we are working with the right thing. So if the first thing is not a tile map, so selected nodes, first index of this array is not a tile map, we will also return. We don't want to work with that. And if this passes, so if it passes through this test, we want to fix these tiles. So we'll create a function uh, let's call this function already, fix tiles, and we want to inject a tile map here into this fix tiles method. This will be like an injection of a dependency. So other classes, so like if we have a plugin or something like that, we can also execute this method in a different way. So we'll get, let's create a variable that will be a tile map and it will be the selected nodes first index. And then we'll pass that to, to this function. And let's work on fixing the tiles now. So let's take rid of this pass keyword. And I will open the documentation for tile map because we'll probably need it. So the logic here is that we will go through all the cells that contain this target tile that we want to override and we will try to get its properties. So let's go back to this tile map. So if they are flipped, we want to flip the new tile as well. If they are not flipped, we don't want to flip it. If they are transposed, we also want to do that. So if we go back to script and to tile map, there is a method that gets all the used tiles of a specific index. So of a specific ID of tiles get used cells by id this is the method that we want so let's copy that ctrl c tile fixer and what we'll do is the following so for cell in the tile map dot get used cells by id and we'll pass this target tile so for every cell that is using this current id in in, in this case will be this target tile that we can change here in this constant We'll do the following. We'll see if it is flipped. So flip it X. It can be flipped on X or Y. And we'll see the following. So there is a function in the tile map that will return if this cell is actually flipped. So if we go back to tile map, 
that is this is cell flip it is cell y flip it and is cell transport let's try to copy all of this so is cell flip it and as far as i could see it doesn't use like a vector 2 we have to pass uh, both index for x and y position so we we'll go to cell dot x and cell dot y and let's do that for flip it as well y axis i will just basically just copy that and just change this to y transpose so transpose it cell dot x cell dot y and tile map tile map now that we know how this cell that we are working with is currently so the properties of the cell if it is or not flipped if it is or not transposed now we can override it with the new cell that we want so the desired tile to override the target tile and to do that we can use the function set cell v i think that this is the name of the function so set cell and this will will need to pass the x and y position but i will use cell v instead because uh i think that this stands for set cell by vector and we can pass a vector and we will need to pass the tile and the flip x and y and also the transpose so let's do that so tile map dot set cell vector we'll pass the cell directly and we will override it with the desired tile and let's pass the flip it x flip it y and the transposed so let's save this so now we can test is if this is actually working but let's see uh what are the the target tile and the desired tile that the desired tile that we want to override so if we go to the tile sets grass tile we can see that the tile that we want to override which is this grass 9 i think that it will be the index 8 yeah the index 8 so let's set this value to 8 and the one that i want to use instead is this grass tile 4 and i think that it is on the third index yeah so let's set this to 3 and let's take rid of that save the tile fixer Control alt s and this is currently as it is and let's run it run and voila it is working just as we wanted so if we want to like change this again we can again change these uh, indexes here so let's say we want to go back to what it was so I will basically just uh, switch this Control alt save Control alt s and run it again and it went back to what it was but I don't like that so I will change this to what I want and run it and there, you, there we have it now note that this is just the bare bones of what a, an editor script can achieve so for instance I have some other sample scripts here and one of them is this tile fixer but also I have an offset fixer for tracks of an animation this will offset some of the values of a position for instance and also i have some factory scripts uh, for instance this is an audio stream random pitch generator this will basically take an ogg file and will create an audio stream random pitch resource with that so this is what i use to automate some of the tasks of the sandbox the good old sandbox that i just showed you with 800 assets to implement i wouldn't implement them manually i just made some scripts that would generate some files for me and i run them and for instance for the sound effects i think that there were 300 sound effects and i just made a script like this and i just had to run it once and it did the job for me so that's it, I hope this helps you be more productive with your game development and if you want to get more like on tool scripts or more on like being productive while game developing leave a comment below so I know what you want to know about and how I can help you so that's it, thank you so much for watching, keep developing and until the next time so to redeem the coupon that library gave us, you first have to create your own account on library. For that, you can use the referral link that I will put in the description, this way I will also earn some library coins with that. And after you create an account, you will have to go to the library. Uh, you can use either the library desktop or the library web interface to do that. And from there, 
you can go into these uh, numbers here. This is the current amount of library credits that you have. And if you click there, you can go into rewards. And from here, you have to find custom code. So here is where we can enter a custom code. So we can enter one. And here you can see that I already claimed mine. So now we only have 99 of these coupons. So if you enter pig dev library here, and then you can click on redeem and then you can claim your coupon. So that's it.